Growing up in the crack era, the beginning. So I was born in 81. I grew up in the height of the crack era. Crack era really started where I'm from, around 81, 82. I'm from a rural city outside of Houston, south of Houston. This was my experience being from a small city and watching this black neighborhood that I was from transform into something I didn't recognize. I hear people say there ain't no such thing as no black community. Well, it did exist. It's not a fairy tale. So I'm gonna take you back to about 1986. I was in kindergarten. These are my strongest memories and first memories of how it all started. Spent a lot of time with my godparents. They lived directly across the street from my parents. They lived in a nice brick home. My godfather was retired. They had a fence around their house, sculptures, in their yard, they would have a landscaper come and do their little uh, sticker bushes. And, you know, they was just the typical older black people who worked and paid for everything that they had. They had new vehicles. And most of the people on the street, that's how the, the setup was. But a lot of elderly people. And then you had a few younger people. But mostly older people lived on my street. And of course, it was generations in the households. It was grandkids, great-grandkids, so the street was full of people. On weekends, people would play softball. The whole neighborhood would be out. I would say at least 50 kids would be out there playing softball, ranging from ages 5 on up to 18 to 22, 23 years old. So when the crack era hit, it affected those people that were born in the 60s. The younger people, born in like between 60 and 68. There was a white family on our street. They had like a bunch of cars in their yard and they lived in a trailer. And we called them the paper people because they delivered the paper locally to everybody in town. So... This is the 80s, so we got younger kids walking up and down the streets now, teenagers, early 20s. I started to see everything change from the porch. We had one of them porches that were screened in, so it looked dark on the porch from the outside, but we could see clear on the outside. And clear on the inside, I mean. And so the people were starting to, you know, create traffic. We started to see more cars coming down our street. And our street was like a dead end street. So it was one way in and one way out. And when the kids would get off the bus, we had our, you know, Miss Etna's, Miss Betsy's, Miss, you know, Miss Ida Mays, those type of names that's in most traditional black neighborhoods back in that time. They would pay attention to the kids and, you know, we had, you know, it was like a village. Each one teach one. So we'd have to worry about, you know, anybody kidnapping anybody or anything bad happening because we always everybody had eyes on them and everybody had everybody's phone numbers back in the time too and most of the people was either related or they was intermarried that's how they connected or maybe they just knew each other all their lives so suddenly everything just started to change the youngsters started to be walking down the street smoking uh it started to be a lot of fighting People couldn't leave nothing unlocked. You couldn't leave your gate unlocked. You know, back in the day, they had those little gates with the two dogs at the top. And if you're from the 80s, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, back then, you know, you couldn't have your car in your driveway unlocked to the, to the point, because that's how bad it started to get. People started breaking in people's houses, and we all knew who was breaking in the houses. It was nothing, you know... It was no rocket science. We knew who was selling the drugs. 
we knew who was on the drugs after a while. But in the beginning, nobody knew what this thing was that everybody was on. We just heard it's a new drug, and they called it crack rock. And I would hear, you know, older people say crack or crack rock, and I'd be like, what's that, you know? And then I started to see the effects of it. So we would go to church on Sundays, and the preacher would be preaching about drugs and dope this and dope that and you'll see certain people giving people nasty looks and everybody was just you know shaming one another because they had sons and grandsons who was out there selling the drugs and it was really nothing that the older people really could do that was bringing the money in the house because most of these older people was either on a fixed income or they just just didn't have it you know what I mean so when the youngsters start bringing the money in the house they just went along and started to become a part of the culture. And I started seeing groups of young men crowding up in the streets. And there'd be one person walking toward them. And everybody would be running full speed trying to, you know, what they called it a stang. Trying to make that stang. And then the doe fiends, you would see them beat up the doe fiends. And, you know, then they started to become familiar faces. People you knew started to deteriorate right before your eyes. Beautiful women would turn into just whole, just, just a scabs. Men, nice looking men, they would start turning into just zombies. It was just like a zombie effect. And during this time, black people had started to just not trust each other anymore. Because it got to the point where you didn't know who was on that dope, or you knew who was on that dope, and you didn't want them in your yard, or you didn't want your children associated with them, or your family associated with them. And some people who had people that was on drugs in their family, they ostracized them. You know, they threw them out the house. They couldn't come home. You know, they began to just walk the streets and just become the neighborhood burglars. So it came to the point where we had a major tragedy in our city. It happened in the city next to our city, but everybody knew everybody, so it was just family oriented area. And uh, it was a man, he was 100 years old, and they broke in the house on him and they murdered him. They took some collectible guns and some coins. And this just shocked the whole community. Nobody ever thought that somebody would kill somebody a 100 years old. He was born in the 1800s. He was one of the oldest people where we were from. And it hurt a lot of people. And that's when I think the realization came that, okay, this thing is bigger than just addiction. This thing is a devil. And so many people just started to change and turn on each other and as people started to get on drugs people started to sell it more it became like the new job being a dope dealer and these young guys would start to create all kind of havoc you couldn't even drive down your street because it was just so many people hurtled up everywhere and the people that were civilized like my godparents and stuff they would just keep their gate locked they had to lock the screen we had we got broke in like maybe twice while one of my one time one of my big mama was in the hospital. They broke in her house twice and just turned the whole house upside down, cause people knew when people wasn't at home, cause that's how close everybody was. And it just got to the point for me as a kid seeing this, I didn't understand. Like I didn't understand why people got so wicked. I didn't understand why were people busting people in the head at random and. Why would somebody want to do drugs? And it just didn't click to me until later on in my life. And I got older. I became, you know, a teen. And I started to see it hit my family. And then I was like, wow, this thing is deep. So, eventually the paddy wagon started to come, which is the jump out boys. They would come in the neighborhood just at random and jump out and just chase all the guys up and down the street. And when they would chase them up and down the street, they would catch some of them. Some of them would get away. It got so bad that you couldn't hang your clothes on the clothesline if you had a clothesline because niggas were stealing your clothes off the clothesline. You couldn't set your shoes on the porch to dry it in the sun if you just washed some shoes out and didn't want to put them in the washing machine and met, put them in a the dryer and mess them up. They would steal your shit. And once the jump out boys started to jump out, it was like, you know, th that's when you know it was it's getting out of control. So they started locking everybody up. People started getting out 
And the ones that got out either got on the dope or they tried to become the dope man. And that's why I'm going to end my video with the dope man. Because that'll be the full-fledged crack era. And how everything started to just decline in our neighborhoods. Thanks for watching.